One year ago, GitHub welcomed SAML. Now, thanks to the thousands of developers in the community who tested and gave feedback, GitHub code scanning is finally generally available. And today, we're gonna take a first look at it. This is the Three Minutes Friday. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coded Dave and welcome to a new episode of the Three Minutes series. In each episode, I will try and explain a concept, showcase a product or a service, or yet try to teach you something in just three minutes. Short videos, big value, hopefully. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and if you want to learn more about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new videos. Today, we're gonna talk about the newly released GitHub code scanning. And since this is a three minutes Friday, I will not go too deep inside the concept, but let me know in the comment section below if you want me to do a full video about the GitHub code scanning and I will do it. Let's start the clock and get into it. So what is GitHub code scanning? Code scanning is a new feature that allows you to analyze your GitHub repositories and find security and vulnerability issues in your code. If code scanning finds a potential vulnerability or errors in your code, GitHub displays an alert in the repo. And after you fix the code that triggered that alert, GitHub of course closes the alert. Let's see how to enable and use it. To enable GitHub code scanning, we just need to go to the security tab in our GitHub interface and then use this code scanning alert. If you don't have code scanning enabled, you can just click on this set up this workflow button. A lot of major languages are supported, C, C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python and Go. And new languages will be added over time. If you click on the setup workflow button, you see that a GitHub Action Editor pops up. And this is because code scanning heavily integrates with GitHub Actions to run. The default workflow which opens is designed to run on push, pull request, and also on schedule. You can of course implement your own triggers, but it's highly recommended to have a schedule trigger as well. So code scanning and code QL can keep analyzing your repo and its content to ensure you have the maximum protection possible. Let's scroll down and we can see a few things over here. This workflow utilizes a matrix and you can add the languages your repos uses directly in here. Let's say you wanna scan also for Java and JavaScript, you will just add those two to the matrix. We can also see that code QL needs to be initialized here with the matrix you created. And it's, this needs to be done before the build. And then the basic workflow try to automatically build any compiled language in your repo. This of course will address some common scenarios. So if you need any specific build parameters or any other library for your build to run, you will have to change this with your own one. Finally, the last step is to actually perform the CodeQL analysis. So let's save this and we see that the new action workflow is running. As you can see, after initializing the code and building it, it's time for perform the analysis. The action tries to build the database for the recommendation for that specific language. And after that, it starts analyzing your code base for the language you've chosen. And this may take a while. As you can see, the scanning has been completed. The results have been uploaded to GitHub. Now, how can we check those results? And how can we make sure that our application doesn't have any vulnerability? To do so, Let's just go back to the security tab and we can already see next to the code scanning alerts that we do have one alert. So let's click on this and we can see that CodeQL has identified some hard coded credentials in our code base. Let's click on it. And here we can see a lot of information. First of all, we can see the security bulletins that are associated with this vulnerability. We can see exactly what the vulnerability occurs in which file and which line, and also why CodeQL thinks this is a vulnerability. We can see a very detailed explanation of what the problem is, have some recommendation on how to solve it, and even some example on how to solve it. And at the end, we also have some literature references about this problem. So as you can see, it's been very easy for us to enable code scanning, and it's even easier to check for code scanning alerts and to solve them because we have now all the information we need to be able to go back to our code and change it for the better. As a final note, code scanning is available for free for public repositories, while for private repositories is available in GitHub Enterprise as part as advanced security. So what do you think about code scanning? I personally think it's a very cool feature and actually pretty useful indeed. In fact, I'm using it in all my repos. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to go more in depth into the topic and make a whole video about this.
thousand of developers that have tested that that said that, that, that it's a very cool and cool thanks so much for watching i really hope you enjoy it hit the like button below subscribe if you haven't already and i see you in the next video here at coder dave